Using Microsoft Loop is a great way to increase your organization and productivity, and it's even easier to use than you may think. Now, there is a lot to learn about Microsoft Loop, and we're going to start by talking about workspaces today. I happen to prefer to use Loop as a web application, but you can download a desktop app by going to the end of the URL for Loop and clicking on the icon that looks like a little computer screen with a downwards arrow. When you come to Loop for the first time, you will have a default workspace called Getting Started. If you were to click into it, it will provide you a sample with some ideas of how to set up your very first loop. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have a navigation menu where you can find things like search and recent that we talked about in a previous video, as well as workspaces. If you click on workspaces, it will open up a pane that will show you all the ones you have. Right now, we just have getting started. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new workspace. For this series of videos on how to use Loop, I'm going to use Project Alchemy as the case study. This is a new business setting up their collaboration processes for the first time. To create a new workspace, go to the Create New button in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. You will see two choices, Pages and Ideas or New Workspace. We're gonna focus on new workspace. A floating dialog box will appear that is going to walk us through the setup process. First, give the workspace a name. Then you can choose an icon. While not mandatory, I use icons to visually identify the different choices on the workspace list. There are a lot of icons to choose from, so I'm going to use the search function to find the one that I want. Once you find an icon that you like, click it to add it. Next, you can choose if you want to share the workspace with others. Again, this is not mandatory because a workspace can be private. My private space is called Brain Dump. When you share a workspace, the people invited will have access to all of the content contained in it. Now, there are ways to share just pieces of it, but that's a subject for another video. In this example, Adele is working on Project Alchemy with me. So for now, I will add her. We can add more people later if needed. Click Continue. On the next screen, you will have the option to associate files with the space. To help Loop find potential files, describe what the space is for. As you type, Loop will pull out keywords. Notice on the right side of the dialog box, there are multiple tabs at the top. These are related to the keywords identified. You can look through all of the files at once on the All Files tab, or you can look at one keyword at a time by selecting the individual tabs. Already, I can tell there are several suggested files based on the keyword Work that are not what I'm looking for. I can click the X next to the Work tag to remove that criteria. Now I'm going to click on the Doodle tab, and the suggestions here are loop components that I happen to have used in different places. This loop for brainstorming handouts is a good one to keep track of, so I will select it and add it to the workspace. You can add multiple files if you like. Before we click Create to finish setting up the workspace, I would like to point out the cover image that was automatically chosen when we started the workspace. You can click on the cover image to change to any of the options that are available. I find it useful to have a unique image for each workspace to visually identify the one that I want when I'm on the grid view page. For now, I will keep the suggested cover photo and that's everything we need for the setup process. Click Create. Now that you have your first workspace, I'd like to take you back to the Loop homepage so that you can see all of the workspaces in a grid view. There are a couple of features that you will only see from the grid view. If you hover your mouse over a specific workspace, you will see the three dots for the More Options menu. From here, you can set a workspace as a favorite so that it will add it to the left-hand navigation rail, making it easier to find the ones you use the most. You would come here to rename and style your workspace. So for example, if you skipped on creating the icon, you can come back and do it here. 
If your organization uses sensitivity labels, this is where you would come to set the label. This is one of the places you can come to add additional members to your workspace. And this is also where you will come to delete a workspace if you no longer need it. For example, I don't need Microsoft's Getting Started loop. So I can select the three dots and click Delete. A floating dialog box will appear that's going to ask you if you really want to delete this workspace and let you know that everything will permanently be deleted. So be very careful when using this option because once the information is gone, you cannot get it back. Now this was a empty container that Microsoft provided as an example, so I'm fine clicking delete for this particular instance. In the next video, we're going to talk about the different ways you can add content to your workspace. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.